Or you? Are you the newbie? Y yes, sir. This is a new ribosome allocated to this section, made to serve. Okay, okay, I don't need those formalities. You must be new to this place, huh? Yes, sir. I have polymerized three minutes ago. Right, you can work over there with that RNA guy. Go do your work. What? Um, do I ever get to go out of the body for an excursion? When I was a monomer, I heard some DNA guys go to what they call glass tubes. <sighs> you know they never come back, right? What? Yeah, they get sacrificed in the name of an experiment. But you know what's even better? People out there don't even know us other than that we simply exist. What? Really? Yes, so forget about it. They still think DNA converts straight into polypeptides. But that's what we do! Exactly! That's what infuriates me! We kill ourselves 24-7 to do this for them, but they don't even know us! Will they ever find us? Okay, okay, let me teach you where they're up to. Sit down. But I can't sit down- Currently, they think that codons are completely overlapped when they translate the nucleic acid, meaning that only four nucleotides are needed to make a dipeptide. Why? Because the distance between two amino acid residues is the same as the distance between two bases in nucleic acid. From this, they came up with many theories about translation, such as the major minor code or diamond code. Ah, oh, the diamond code sounds fancy. It's a theory that each amino acid slots into a gap in the DNA to polymerize. This gap has four bases that are in contact, with two of the nucleotides as a pair, placed like a diamond. I see, I see. So depending on the combination of the bases, it would determine which amino acid slots in. Hey, you want the dump for a baby pollen peptide? What? <laughs> Anyways, finds out there were 20 different versions of a gap in the DNA. There's also 20 different amino acids. Shouldn't this work just fine? <sighs> Never mind, you are dumb. What? None of these theories coded for any known polypeptides. What if this theory works with a newly discovered polypeptide sequence? Right. For this reason, a guy called Brenner proved that the theory of overlapping codon cannot be true. What? Yeah. In this proof, there are three assumptions. One, there are four nucleotides. Although, since they don't know if this process uses DNA or RNA, let's call them A to D. But it has adenosine, guanine, and cyanine. Two, the codon overlaps. So, sequence ABCDA will make tripeptides with codon ABC, BCD, and CDA. Three, the degeneracy of codon holds. I know, I know. More than one codon can code for the same amino acid. At this point already, overlapping codon <laughs> seems unpromising. Let's say we make a dipeptide, which has 400 possible combinations. Mm, yeah, it's 20 times by 20. Right. Then how many combinations are possible with four nucleotides? It must be... 256. Impressive. <laughs> this meant that four nucleotides won't be able to code for all dipeptide sequences. Is that the proof? Not yet. Let's extend this further and think of a tripeptide. This tripeptide has a random amino acid sequence X, Y, and Z. Now, if we know the codon that codes for Y, and if we assume the codons overlap, there are only four different codons possible for X, right? Yes, because the first two nucleotides for the codon of Y will be the last two for the codon of X. Mm-hmm. The other side also works similar to this. Now, assuming each codon translates to a different amino acid, that means for one codon of Y, a maximum of four kinds of amino acid can be the amino acid X. However, Brenner had a list of all known polypeptide sequences. From there, he saw an amino acid, let's call this Y, that had more than four different kinds of amino acid next to it. This meant that there has to be more than one codon that translates to Y. Hmm. Okay, let's say the amino acid Y is lysine, and this is coded with codon ABC. Then only four different amino acids can be X. Although, because humans know more than four amino acids that can be X, by looking at the known polypeptide sequences, they thought there must be another codon, such as ABD, that also codes for lysine. In that way, another four different kinds of amino acid can be in the place of X, in a polypeptide. Mm, mm. Using whatever side that has more variety of amino acids, they can then calculate the minimum number of codons required to translate one amino acid. Doing this to all 20 different amino acids, Brenner concluded that 70 different codons are needed to code known sequences using the theory of overlapping codons. Isn't there only 64 codons? Exactly! They now know, finally, that overlapping codon doesn't work! Cool! How do you know all this? I have what you call friends. I know some ribosomes in the brain and the eyes. They send me letters through neurons. Ah, oh, then they must know whose body we're in. Ah, uh, I think it's Bri- No, 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 Brenner. Isn't he the guy who proved all this? Oh. Also, did they ever prove that the codons are completely non-overlapping and not partially overlapping? Uh, no. Do they know where we start and stop translating? Be quiet. Uh, do they even know which codon codes for which amino acid? I said be quiet. I mean, Brenner's discovery made a huge advance in genetics as a perfect cornerstone to decipher the central dogma, but what we do is still... Newbie, off to work.